Join us for saving the best for last, the glorious appearing. Hey, welcome to Stone of Help for the fifth and final installment of Saving the Best for Last. Now, our text comes from John chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, where Jesus turns the water into wine. And, uh, you know, he shows up at the, at the wedding there at Cana of Galilee. Uh, they run out of wine. He fixes the problem. Uh, and uh, the, and this, is, this is Chris's on take, on version of it here, I guess you could say. Uh, the, the governor tastes it, and, and the governor tells the, he's talking to the uh, bridegroom, and he said, you know, messed everything up. This is, this is not the way people do things. Uh, you know, you save the best wine for last. I'm going to tell you, we have a bridegroom. His name is Christ, and he has saved the best for last. Now, we're sharing a message uh, this week that we just call Saving the Best for Last, The Glorious Appearing. Now, w w look, we're talking about the second coming of Christ, which is the glorious appearing, and we're going to just have to uh, be very brief on it because this could take a long, long time. And so we're going to just hit diff just a certain different points that will take place during the, the second coming of Christ. And um, so let's just go ahead and get, let's get start, started by saying this, you know, many confuse the rapture and the second coming. However, uh, they are two uh, very distinct and very different events. And uh, actually there's, I know one verse in scripture that mentions the rapture and the second coming in the same verse. Now I stand to be corrected, so if, if you know one, drop it down in the comments for me, so I, because I, I enjoy learning, I really do. But the verse that I'm thinking about is Titus chapter two, verse 13, that says this, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great, of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So the blessed hope, that's the rapture, the glorious appearing, that's the second coming. They're both mentioned right there. and. There's several differences between the rapture and the second coming, but I'm, I'm going to name three of them for you. Ready? At the rapture, Christ returns in the air. You remember, I think it was last week where the Bible talks about the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice from the archangel, trumpet of God. It talks about how, uh, you know, we'll be caught up together in the clouds and we'll meet the Lord in the air. That right there is the rapture when we meet him in the air. But at the second coming, Christ returns to the earth. Zechariah 14.4 says that his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives. As a matter of fact, it says that the, the Mount of Olives will be split. And did you know right now, there's a fault line going right across the top of the Mount of Olives. I mean, things are already setting up. It's ready for him to, to set foot there and, and it's going to split, right? The second difference is this. At the rapture, Jesus will return for his saints. Remember when he descends, the Bible says the dead in Christ are going to rise first and we which are alive and remain are going to be caught up together. And so if you're born again, if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, then he's coming back for you in the rapture. He's coming for his saints. That's the rapture. But at the second coming, he will return with his saints. Uh, Revelation chapter 19, starting at verse 11, I, I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. Now, can I, can I stop right there for just a second? On his head were many crowns. Now, if you go back to, I believe it's Revelation chapter 1, uh, uh, Jesus has zero crowns on his head, probably because that's the Day of Atonement if I'm not mistaken. Now, in chapter 14, he has one crown on his head, a single crown, but here he has many crowns. Can I tell you what's just, what's happened is he's transitioning into king of kings because he is headed right back down here to earth on that white horse and he's going to set up his millennial reign down here where he's going to rule and reign for a thousand years. Come on, as king of kings and lord of lords. And, and the rest of that verse says the armies of heaven followed him upon white horses. You know, who's that? That's those who made the rapture. He's coming back with his saints. We're coming back with him. The third difference is the rapture takes place in a twinkling of an eye. 1 Corinthians 15, 52, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. It's fast. The second coming will be visible to everybody. Uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 7 says that he comes with the clouds and every eye shall see him. Now, the second coming will actually start the 1,000-year reign of Christ, where we actually just mentioned a little bit just a second ago, where he's going to set up uh, uh, every, uh, 
he's going to set up down here on this earth and he's going to rule and reign for 1,000 years. 1,000 year reign of Christ. Now, on the first day of the millennium, uh, this is where Satan is going to be bound in chains and he's going to be placed in the bottomless pit. That's Revelation chapter 20, verse 3. And during this 1,000 years, he will have absolutely no influence over mankind. Uh, he, he, there's nothing that he can do. But at the end of this 1,000 years, Satan will be released. Now, there's a reason for that, but we're not really going to... That's a whole different message. So, but when he's released, the Bible says that he goes out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Now, I'm going to tell you, listen, you would think after seeing Christ stand before them face to face that everyone would actually convert. That's not the case, though. That just, that didn't, that's not going to happen because you know why? Some people are just simply wicked. And it's those people who are going to join Satan in one final onslaught against the saints of the Most High. But I'm going to tell you something. It's not going to work because Revelation chapter 20 verse 9 states that Satan and all those who followed him are instantly consumed by God's fire. Then we get to Revelation 20 verse 10 that says the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and he shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. That's not good for the devil, but come on, that's saving the best for the last for you and me when we finally get him gone and he's out of here. He's in the lake of fire where he does not a thing he can do. He'll be tor come on, I, forever and ever. That's forever. That's a long time. Come on. This will be the moment when God will make all things new. 21, Revelation 21, 5. He's going to wipe away all the tears from their eyes. Uh, there'll be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. Uh, there'll be no more pain. The former things are going to all be passed away. Then there's a new heaven and new earth that's going to descend. And, and then God says, He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. So friend, listen to me. Stay strong. Stay alert. Stay awake because he has definitely saved the best for last. And listen, there's only one way to, to make sure that you're on that white horse following Jesus back at the second coming. And that's to make the rapture. And there's only one way to make the rapture, and that's to be born again. And so I'm going to ask you to do this with me. Would you? I'm going to slip my hat off. Would you do this? Would you just bow your head with me and pray this prayer? Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, I know salvation is easy as A, B, C. And A, I admit. I admit that I have sinned for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I admit that. B is belief, Father. I, the, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting in life and I believe that Jesus that you are the Son of God and the sea is called whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved and right now in this moment I am calling upon you to save my soul to write my name down in the Lamb's book of life because I want to make I want to be saved I want to make the rapture and I want to follow you back on a white horse and while I'm still down here on this earth Father I want to occupy until you come back I want to do what I'm supposed to do as a believer and so I thank you for saving my soul. I thank you for writing my name down. I thank you for, for giving your life's blood for me. It's in the name of Jesus that I pray all things. Amen. Now listen to me. If you prayed that prayer, do this. Drop me a, drop me a line in the comment section. If you'd rather not do that, that's fine. Just just uh, go to the, the page where I, we've got the the prayer request, just drop it on there. Say, look, I got saved today. I gave my life to Jesus. We would just like to know that, celebrate with you. And so, listen, I want to say thank you for hanging out with me over the last five weeks. Now, I think we're going to be able to put all these last five videos, we'll put them in one place, uh, in, in one um, playlist. So if you want to listen to them all at the same time, or if you want to send them to somebody, do that. Share them. Share some of these videos with people and kind of get the word out. So thank you guys for joining me. May God bless you, and may God bless your family.